Go on. <laughs> Welcome back. We are, what are we talking about? We goats. were talking about goats. <laughs> Everybody here on the show today has goats, which is funny. And, and, and just so Robert knows, <laughs> you're not getting a goat. Okay. I think our next guest could probably drop a goat off at your place for Christmas. I probably could. <laughs> Melody, Ward, Melody Ward is here. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are y'all? We're doing fine. You're with CASA, mm -hmm. and you've been on the show before talking mm -hmm. about uh, uh, what CASA is. For, for those people that don't, tell us about CASA. CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. What we do is we train community volunteers to um, provide best interest advocacy for children in foster care here in our community mm -hmm. in the 14th Judicial District. And the adv advocacy is a, uh, a, a short-term yes. uh, um, uh, Thing, uh, per service that you provide? Yes, right. it's it, during the term of their foster care stay. So when they come into care, the judge at court will appoint a CASA volunteer to follow along with that child, mm -hmm. and that volunteer then stays with that case until it closes so that they have that continuity throughout mm -hmm. from beginning to end mm -hmm. um, or as soon as we're assigned to the end. But Why is it so important that somebody be associated with that uh, person that's going through that? Well, because everything changes in foster care. You, uh, you, know, you have this horrible moment, this gut-wrenching moment that you're removed from everything you know. Even mm -hmm. though you're removed for a reason, whatever that reason may be, it is still all that child knows and it has been a constant in their life. Well, then everything changes. Mm -hmm. Schools change, um, faces change, homes change. They may be in four or five different foster homes, but their CASA volunteer comes to every new situation they're in and they just remain yeah. that constant. And so yeah. they still see that same face from home that they see every time. So they're not afraid, scared, confused. Yes, and yes. Have it just that keeps continuity. them grounded to, okay, this is, you know, this person has been here. This is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. this, this wow. is a short term reality that I'm living in now. Yeah. And that's hard for any of us to understand. I couldn't imagine moving four times in a year. Right. I just couldn't. So yeah. we, it's hard on these kids. Yeah. And so we try and make this process as short as possible. We want to find that permanency as quickly as we can for mm -hmm. these kids. Mm -hmm. Right. How, how uh, on average, and you may not know the answer to this, but how, how long does it take to go from from being in foster care to being uh, positioned in a permanent uh, situation? Our cases last anywhere from a year to a year. And a half. Wow. wow. That's a long period of time. It is, but it's a, the law states that a parent has 12 months from the time their children are removed from their home and they go to that initial court hearing, yeah. then they have one year to get, to get it together. To get it okay. together, okay. And so, so that's, then a, that's we have, a given. That's a given. We have this year. A lot of times on the cases that we're requested on, they're not the ones that we know are going to end quickly. Sometimes a case will come into care, and we can tell that the parents, when they come into that initial hearing, they are ready to do whatever it takes to get their kids back in their home. There are others that it takes them a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit more of a kick in the pants yeah. to get them going mm -hmm. than just your mm -hmm. average. Right. Um, so, especially with drug addiction and things like that, we deal with a yeah. lot of drug addiction. So there, there, there is some uh, key elements in in that family el mm -hmm. uh, unit that that need to be fixed. Yes. Either yes. it's uh, married too young or drug or alcohol abuse or. Mm -hmm. or yeah, just we see yeah. a lot of neglect, and a lot of it is caused by drug addiction. Uh, drug addiction has just, it's rampant, okay. the methamphetamines yeah. and, and prescription drugs we're seeing a lot of. And, and those things, they take a long time for recovery. And, and our first goal of every case, and it's the state's goal and it's the law, the yeah. goal is yeah. to return the child to the home from which they were removed. And so everybody right. is working very hard at providing all the services we can provide to mm -hmm. get mom and dad straightened right. up and so they can get their kids home because the kids are going to do better in the in home, home of origin. They just are. Yeah, it, but there needs to be some things that are straightened but up. But things have to way. change yeah. first. Right. Otherwise, then that, that child has the potential to go on to repeat the same thing yes, a, as the, they get older. The rate of, of them coming back into care with their own children yeah. is very high. Just since I've started, I've been with CASA five and a half years. Since I've started, I have seen um, teenagers that were in the system when I first started that were young teens that are now parents and they are right. in care with their own children and so there's this cycle that has to mm -hmm. be broken and but we want to let people know wow. that that's not normal I mean no. I mean CASA is in there to, to, to do positive things yes this is just one case and, and there's other probably yes some positive. we have some great success stories we have volunteers who have um, come in and 
found uh, great placements maybe in another state. We found a parent who was in a different state and that child went and moved in mm -hmm. with the parent that was the other okay. state because yeah. the parent here wasn't getting it together, but we found this great parent who was willing to do so. Right. Or, you know, just family that can keep the children instead of staying in the foster care system, they can go into the home into the of an appropriate family right. member. So we work very hard with DHS to try and find those mm -hmm. folks mm -hmm. that would be appropriate so that they can be at least in some familiarity. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the, this takes manpower. It does. And, it does. and people that want to help with this whole system, and I think that's one thing you wanted to talk about was as far as volunteers you need? Yes, we need volunteers. Right now in Boone County, we have 16 volunteers for Boone and Newton County. That only covers about 40% of the cases in care because our volunteers only serve on one to two cases each and there are way more than that. Okay. Um, so we have cases that come into care that we can't cover. And it's very difficult to sit down with a list of children that you know need a volunteer, that need an advocate mm -hmm. to walk beside them, and then prioritize who gets one first. And that is gut-riching for our you volunteers. You don't have the people sure, to help. Be... We don't. Yeah. If we had another 15 volunteers, we could cover everybody that came in, and that is our goal. We have mm -hmm. a 2020 goal of 100% mm -hmm. of kids in care served. Yeah. by the year 2020 and that's not only our st our local goal but that's our state and national goal yeah. as well. Well, uh, well I was going to yeah. ask what does it entail to be an advocate? Mm -hmm. Advocates <laughs> come in and they go through a backgrounding process. We do background checks and all of those things and then um, they come in and do their initial interview with our volunteer supervisor and then we set up trainings and there's a training actually coming up in January they go through a training class with us that is um, 30 hours. We mm -hmm. provide all of the training on the system and how kids okay. come into care and the courtroom and the law and all of those things. And so, so they're very prepared. So they have a, a cer certain amount of confidence they when do. they're finished. And we walk them through all of the first. We want to really be hands-on with our volunteers mm -hmm. when they do the things. When We're not just going to throw you into a courtroom mm -hmm. and say, here right. you go. Good right. luck yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. We want to uh, so make you don't sure have we to Well, and that's comfort first. for the child as yes. well, yeah. for them not to be just totally green. I mean, that, I yes. would think that would Yeah, and we try and pair tough. advocates, too, so that there's not just one set of eyes. We'll have, we have a lot of couples that do CASA work together, mm -hmm. sister-in-laws we've had before, friends. Mm -hmm. We try and partner you with somebody because our confidentiality is so serious that we don't talk about these cases right. even to, there's no pillow talk. You know, yeah, so if okay. you're doing it with your spouse, then that person, you have another set of ears to bounce ideas right. off of because you're going right. to see different things when you go into a home. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, I had a question. I forgot now. Um, and these classes go on all the time? Uh, we try and do one quarterly. Oh, okay. okay. So we'll have one in January, and then uh, we'll have one again probably in March, and then mm -hmm. you know, one mm -hmm. in the summer. So you do them uh, four times a year, okay. Mm -hmm. And for people that are out there, you don't have to be a, uh, you have to be legally oriented. You don't have to have any kind of skills other than you just have to back, pass a background check and go through the Yes, the training. And, and a willingness yeah. to do this, a heart for these kids, and just a, you know, a stick to itiveness yeah. that comes with. It's not an easy volunteer experience, but it's very rewarding. It's right. very rewarding. Yeah. All right. Well, let's give people a, a contact how they can get a hold of you and we'll go from there. They can call us at the office. Our office number is 743-2212. Cell phone number is 504-0694 and we are available all the time. So anytime someone calls, I, I take them in the middle of the night as well. So. Okay, okay. All right. So we've not, we, we try and be very available to our volunteers all the time. All right. That is CASA. And, and if you have more questions, I'm sure Melanie or one of the other ones would mm -hmm. be more than willing yeah, to answer And we have more information at the end of the show. And if you want to, uh, uh, if you just walked in in the middle of this conversation, you're interested, just give us a call here at the station, 870-741-4891. More information is at the end of the show. And we thank you so much. Thank you. And please thank come you. back after the holidays so and we'll, we'll talk more. Great. Thank, thank you. Great. Thank you. Right. Up next, we have uh, the Honeyman, uh, Eddie Watkins. He's going to be talking about a documentary film that's going to be playing on our 26.1 the This Network. It's going to be three times uh, around the holidays. A uh, documentary about the importance of bee beekeeping and the future of our precious bees. Okay. We'll be doing that in just a few minutes. Stay with us.